Hi guys and welcome back to my classics series. Today I want to talk to you about why I read classics and why I love them so much because I feel like it might be a bit weird for an 18 year old girl to be obsessed with classics and to want to be living back in the Victorian era and just to want to be totally immersed in that world and I know there are lots of you watching my videos who are a similar age who love reading classics as well but I feel like the general response I get from people is either good on you, it's amazing that you read classics and then we share recommendations between us, I give recommendations to you and lots of you give recommendations to me but there are also lots of people who are like well by your age I'd read 5,000 classics and why haven't you read this book and so it's never really in between it's either one extreme or the other and so I kind of don't want to justify myself but I'd really like to explain why I love reading classics so much and really share my love for them today. So my classics story if you'd like involves going right back to 2015 when I read Agnes Grey and Pride and Prejudice and these are the two books that got me completely hooked. The first one I read was Agnes Grey and this had been sat on my bookcase for years and I have no clue how I came by it, how it ended up there, but I'd wanted to read it for years and I don't know why to this day I don't know what was drawing me into this book but it started my love for the Brontes so I am not complaining. I've just finished rereading this actually for the Bronte book club and rediscovering my love for it and I just love it. I feel like it was the perfect book to get me into reading classics and even though I read Wuthering Heights later in the year I really do credit Agnes Grey as a book that got me into the Brontes because without this I probably wouldn't have read anything else by them. I think the thing that is similar about Agnes Grey and Pride and Prejudice is that they're not very hard hitting, their stories amble along and you find out a lot about the characters and really love the characters but at the same time you don't want to weep after reading them. If you do weep it's tears of joy and those are the kind of books that I love reading which is maybe a surprise because Wuthering Heights is one of my favourite books but I feel like in terms of making me love classics and feel really passionate about them it was really nice to start with two books that were really joyous and really made me want to read more. I didn't really know anything about the Brontes before I read Agnes Grey. I knew bits and pieces, I knew that they were authors and I knew they existed but I didn't know any specific details so it's Agnes Grey that made me go and learn about them. I read articles online, I looked at their Wikipedia pages, I read Wuthering Heights and then I read Jane Eyre and I haven't stopped reading their books since. One of my favourite things about reading classics is expanding my knowledge after I've read them so I feel like whenever you read a classic you're going to learn something new about a particular subject whatever that may be so if you read Pride and Prejudice it may be marriage or if you read Agnes Grey it may be about religion any of these types of things I feel like when I read a classic I learn about the time who was on the throne who was a prime minister what were the laws like at the time there is so much there to expand your knowledge and I feel like I can really learn lots through them and even though you can do the same for modern literature I don't feel the same drive to discover as I do with classics and I've always been deeply fascinated by history dating way back to when I was tiny. I just always loved history and I've always loved historical fiction but because I was reading so much YA there's not a lot of YA historical fiction. I was really lost for new YA fiction that was historical and so classics were the right place to turn to demonstrate my love of history and to kind of explain why I love the Victorians so much. When I was about nine or ten I was obsessed with Queen Victoria, really really obsessed and all her children and I made a 20 slide PowerPoint presentation that I delivered to my year six class and I spent all weekend doing it. I got loads of pictures, found loads of information and then I went into school I think on the Monday and I sat down and said I've made this presentation and I was so proud of it and I stood up and talked to everyone about the children of Queen Victoria and they were all really bored but I loved it and I've always been obsessed and when I say obsessed I mean that I'm a very obsessive person so you know how obsessed I am with the Brontes and I've always been the same ever since I was young. I get obsessed and that's not me being hyperbolic, I really do get 
obsessed and fixated on things and the Victorians was one of them. I just immersed myself in the world. And so when I discovered the classics for the first time, I think it was understandable that I gravitated towards Victorian literature. I've always loved visiting period properties such as National Trust places and English heritage that we have in the UK. And I've always loved period dramas. So I love Downton Abbey. I was fixated on that when it first aired and watched every episode religiously. And I feel like I am the kind of person who maybe isn't religious, but I can really relate to a lot of the religious side of things in classics, which you don't get in modern literature as much. And even though I don't go to church or anything, I can really appreciate those aspects. And particularly in classics, I really love reading that. And I love talking about morality and how that links to religion and how that links to things like class as well. And so I think it's delving into those topics that I really enjoy. And I also really love documentaries. So I feel like my love of history and learning and knowledge and books really combines to make classics my favourite thing ever. I sometimes worry that my videos will get a bit repetitive because I talk about the same authors quite a lot but I just love their books and I feel like I make these videos to share my passion and if I was just talking about an author for the sake of it then it wouldn't be as watchable or it wouldn't be as enjoyable for me and I love finding new books for them and reading biographies and just discovering new facts that I can relate to their books and with books like Agnes Grey, which you can probably say is kind of autobiographical, we don't really know for sure how much of it relates to Anne's life. I love finding out the facts about Anne that I can then relate to the book and think, well, why did she write this? Another reason that I read classics, say, over modern historical fiction is that the books are written during that time period and whenever those books are written they're preserved in a certain way. For example if you had a fossil it's preserved under layers of rock. I mean this isn't going to be a technical science video but a fossil is preserved and you get layers on top of it and a historical novel is written at the top layer kind of looking down but the fossil or the classic book in this case, is perfectly preserved in this bubble and so you get this authentic feel to it. But on the other hand, I also like reading historical fiction that was written now and looking back because there are certain constraints that you just don't have. For example, Thomas Hardy has some sex scenes in his book, but it never actually says this is what's happening. Tessa the Devils being a perfect example of this. Whereas if Tessa the Devils was written now, it wouldn't be as censored because now it's acceptable to write and talk about those things openly. So I like to have a balance, but I really do like that authentic nature that comes with classics and how we can actually analyze how things are written because of the culture and the time and the society that they were written in. Another example of this, just to bring it back to the Brontes, is Wuthering Heights, which was demonized in its day and called coarse, which was a term often referred to the Brontes. And it was seen as this horrific novel, but now we can look at it in a way that actually we don't necessarily agree with. You don't necessarily like the characters, but we can see that it was actually quite a subversive title and we can acknowledge how good that was because we're looking back on it and so I really like that mix where you can read books that were censored but also ones that weren't censored to a great extent and actually the reactions in the day and the reactions now and how we can analyse them now. Another thing I love about classics is that you probably know someone who has read the book that you're reading. Even if they haven't read it, they're still very easily accessed. So there is plenty of opportunity to read them and I feel like the more you read them, the more you become trained and the easier it is. And when I first started reading classics, I thought it was great that I'd be able to read one a month. And now I read sometimes five or six a month and I never thought that would be the case. And I'm not saying that everybody should read five or six classics a month or even one a month, but I really love it. And I love how my brain has developed to just make it so much easier to read them and so much more fun because I'm not worrying about the language as much anymore. And I feel like I can talk so much about them 
And sometimes I say things in my videos that you might not agree with and then I love reading your comments and seeing your takes on things and if I've read something to know your recommendations of what I should read next. And I never really had that when I was talking about YA. Sometimes people would read them and I do UK YA chat on Twitter where we talk about books, but there's never that deep level of analytical skills with YA because I feel like with YA I talk in this very passionate way, but I never delve in any deeper. And I feel like you can't do that as much because the books are newer and because not everybody has read them and so there's not this bank of knowledge. Even though people do um, academically study YA books now, there isn't that culture surrounding it. So I don't feel as tempted to analyse YA. And I don't want that to sound like YA is inferior to classics, because that's definitely not the case. I love all literature and I read books because I like the books rather than because they were written at a certain time or have some kind of cultural capital attached to them. But I feel like when I read classics, I go into it knowing that there's gonna be loads and loads of stuff there to look at. And even though I'm reading a book and have thoughts, that's only ever gonna be the tip of the iceberg and there's still so much more to discover. I feel like when it comes to classics, I'm pretty well read, but at the same time, I really don't think I'm well read. So it's a bit of a paradox in the fact that I've read quite a lot, but at the same time, there's so much more to discover. There are centuries worth of books to read and I'm loving the challenge of finding new books and finding new authors and reading old favourites and finding new authors that I love and want to talk about as much as possible and then sharing my love for them with you on these videos and on social media and in real life and I just can't get enough of it. I feel like there's something quite addictive about classics and I feel like just when I think I'm beginning to get comfortable with a book or with a genre or a time period, there's still so much more to learn and it's that insatiable desire for knowledge and that desire to learn more and more and more about the books and the authors that keeps me reading classics and keeps me wanting to talk about them as much as I possibly can. So I'd love to know in the comments why you read classics or maybe why you don't read classics. Is there a reason that maybe you're a bit scared of them or is there something that's stopping you from reading classics? I'd really love to know any of your thoughts on any of the things I've said in this video because I feel like it was a really lovely video to sit and film and just share my love for the books that I really love. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!